All right. Uh, thank you guys all so much for being here today. I'm super grateful. And uh, we're going to have some fun today. We're going to talk a little bit about um, how to really invest in your people. And if you guys, let me actually see, we're going to mute here so that if you guys have background noise, we don't interrupt everything that's going on. Hold on just a second here. All right, so uh, I am Emily Petroff. Most of you that are on here actually know me, and um, so I'm super grateful for you guys being here today. Today we're going to talk a little bit about investing in your team, investing in your people. One of the questions that I get asked a lot is, or, or maybe it's not even so much a question as much as I'm super frustrated and fed up that my people aren't respecting me, and it's um, a variety of situations that I hear a lot. Sometimes it is um, administration, administrative people who are very different uh, personality-wise than entrepreneurs. Um, and then sometimes it's just team members, people that are on my team and they're um, helping grow the team, helping build the business out there, kind of hacking away at uh, building the path. And I'm just not getting, I feel like they don't understand what it is that I put in every single day and I'm not getting the respect that I feel like I deserve. So um, we're going to dig into that a little bit. Um, before before we do, I think we have an opportunity here to have everyone um, share. So, uh, or just tell, say who you are, um, what business that you uh, are in, and um, why you are here today. So, I'm going to unmute, and actually, you guys can go. Um, Brooke, do you want to? Do you want to go first? Oh, maybe she. Am, am I still on mute? Yeah. No. Go ahead. Go ahead. You can go. You can go now. Okay, and tell me again what you'd like me to, to um, go who, over. Who you are, what business you're in, and um, why you're here today. Okay, um, my name is Brooke O'Day, and I own Pause and Reflect Pet Salon in Billings, Montana. And um, I feel like I'm just kind of a pushover of a boss. Um, I have a wonderful staff, and... Uh, I feel like they take advantage of me and I need some great ideas as far as like getting their attention and getting them on board. Um, uh, just kind of like just getting our team back in the same boat or on the same page. So yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. All righty. How about Tannis? Do you want to go? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Tannis Kramer, Western Skies Real Estate. Um, I have uh, owned a real estate company for 24 years now. And I am on this meeting because Emily, you and I missed our coffee date. So this was an invite from you to come see what it's all about. Excellent. Perfect. Thank you, my dear. All right. Uh, how about you, Miss Carly? Hi, I'm Carly with Northern Rockies Marketing Group. And I Finally, think I got this thing figured out. I don't know if you guys, you guys couldn't see me on the iPhone, could you? Nope. Okay, I had no clue how I could get the picture thing going. So anyway, uh, I'm Carly with Northern Rockies Marketing Group, and um, and as far as uh, leading people, I am often I oh I don't know what that did, but anyway, I'm often often seem to be a, a pushover. I have a really hard time. Um, being authoritative, I, I feel like I'm being really, really pushy and and bitchy, if you will, and um, and I I just kind of struggle with it. So, um, there you have it. Okay, super. Well, thank you for for joining us today. I'm excited to see your face. All right, uh, let's see, Miss Danette. Do I have you? No? Maybe Danette had to Is that me. you? Oh, yeah. Go ahead, honey. Can you, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. This is Trina White, and I have real estate, Billings Real Estate, Billings and Beyond. And just uh, looking to grow our business, and I saw it was on Facebook this morning, saw the um, going live, so I thought I'd just sit in and see what's what. Excellent. Excellent. How about, um, let's see, who do we got? Do we have Danette? 
Are you still there? And I thought I saw Stacy. Are you on, Stace? I don't think I have anybody else. Uh, uh, let's see. How about that? Danette, did I un I'm unmuted you? Go ahead. Oh, okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, cool. Um, I'm Danette with Anytime Fitness. Um, my main reason for being on here is because I just want to hear all the great ideas and need some help as far as uh, dealing with different personalities and diversity in 40 some different employees. Um, sometimes I get really frustrated. I feel like a lot of things are unappreciated um, and uh, I think sometimes I'm a little bit too easy and kind of let things go when they need to be addressed. So that's kind of what I'm here for. Cool. All right. Did I, uh, do I have anybody else? Uh, Stacy, are you still on? Okay. Um, I am going to go ahead and, and get started. Uh, if nobody else wants to, to sort of chime in and share, I'm going to mute everybody so that we don't have any interruptions with background noise. All right, so um, uh, so the first thing that I think is really important for us to sort of dig into, and um, I think the reason that sometimes we can come off as a boss or a leader, we can come off as kind of a jerk or feeling like we're a little bit of a jerk, is that we really get uh, butthurt about, or, or there's this perception that we've got to really be... Um, in order to hold our people accountable, we've got to make sure that they are not our friend, right? And um, we want to make sure that in, if we develop friendships with them, that they don't end up um, taking advantage of us at some point. And I think that's sort of an old um, leadership. It's something that, that we were taught or that was the, the boomer generation and above sort of brought down the pike to, to say like, you can't be friends with your people because then you won't be able to hold, hold them accountable. And, um, they will. And, and the only way for us to hold people accountable is to sort of have this raw and, and very tough demeanor. Um, I actually don't agree with that at all. And, and what I see and, and when I spend time with my clients is that we don't have to have that. The more transparent that we are and the more that we humanize ourselves with, the, with our people, the more they're actually willing to understand that um, we're doing the work on ourselves too, right? We're, we're not just in expecting them to do something that we ourselves are not willing to do. And so I think that it's really, really important that we recognize first that we can be friends with them and that when we invest in them and we develop relationships with them, it should actually be easier to hold them accountable, but it takes developing the skill set to have some raw, honest conversations with them. And I think that's also something that we don't um, get taught. That's not something that we're really often very good at. We don't want to hurt their feelings and we don't want to have our own feelings hurt, right? So, um, so having raw, honest conversations and recognizing that developing relationships with them should actually support you in holding them accountable, not making you look like a jerk to them when they've not done what they agreed to do or what you put out there for them to do in terms of goals and objectives for your company or for them, their part of your company. Um, so what does that look like then? Um, I think that the first piece is that we've got to really get clear about our own authenticity. Um, sometimes, and, and I'll speak from, from my personal standpoint, um, I was a horrible boss. Uh, I did not, um, so I've owned 13 different companies in, in different industries. Um, Tannis and I were talking just a few minutes before everybody got on and she was asking me what, how did you get started and, and why do you do this? And I think for me, a huge part of why this is important to me and, and why I continue to invest in entrepreneurs and in business owners is because I wasn't a good one for a very, very, very long time time. Um, I was a victim to my life and to my businesses that I had, and I didn't invest in my staff the way that I'm now telling you to do. Um, and so I had an opportunity. I worked with a mentor and I worked with a coach and I, I had an opportunity to sort of wake up and to recognize some of the leadership myths that were out there that I was subscribing to and the way that I had been taught, um, not only by growing up 
in an, in an entrepreneurial environment where my parents were running businesses and, and what I, I learned from watching them run their businesses. But then also, you know, as a teenager into my early adulthood, some of the jobs that I had, I learned leadership from those people. And I'll tell you, like, I'm grateful for each one of those experiences and they didn't give me the best um, they didn't set me up the best for being the best leader. And the other piece is that I wasn't honest with myself, right? I wasn't willing to have, I wasn't willing to look in the mirror and have those honest, raw conversations with myself. So when you're not doing that on your own and then you look at your people and you have expectations of them, they can see right through it, right? They knew, they knew, they knew that I was full of shit. So, um, and I didn't, I didn't, I was like just pretending the whole time. So, um, so when I got clear about um, who I was and what it was that I wanted to be, it was hard. It was there were some real challenging um, times along the way that I had to let go of my victim mentality. I had to take more ownership of things and um, stop placing blame. And that was something that I didn't know how to do. So it was a process for me to learn. And through that, I gained my. Um, uh, and every, I, I think I'm, it's always a journey, right? But the, the thing that I really got clear on was who I was authentically as a mom, as a wife, as a woman, and as a business owner. And um, I think sometimes we walk around, and this was true for me, watering ourselves down as, as women, especially. I don't think we have any guys on the call today. Sometimes we do have guys on the call, but um, I would say a large portion of my audience is women. So I'm going to speak to you ladies. Um, we water ourselves down and we try to be everything to everyone. And um, I'll tell you, that is exhausting, or at least it was for me. It was a very, very, um, I, I was tired every day. I, I was exhausted from trying to be this way for this person and this way for this person. So as you're navigating your business, um, get clear about who it is that you are authentically, because when you're grounded in that and you know what that looks like, like from the core, there's very little that can rock you. Big storms can come and things can be, you know, the business can can have ups and downs. The the market, for those of you in real estate, can shift. Um, uh, and when you're grounded in who you are as a woman and as a business owner, those things will stay with you. And and there will be, you'll, you'll have a much easier time finding the right employees that are a good fit for you and for your business. Um, I'm going to give you an example there. There are just some people that would not be a good fit for me because I'm of a growth mind mindset. I wasn't always that way. Right. But I would never hire someone now, um, that was not a good fit, uh, or that was not of a growth mindset. And I know what that looks like. Um, so getting clear about who you are then helps you decide culturally who's a good fit to bring in and then you can push them harder, right? But when we bring people in and we hire them specifically for skill set, right? Like this person is a rock star at this skill. What happens is that sometimes they're not a match for our culture and they want to allow us to grow and develop them. And so when we want more um, or we want to encourage them to do more, be more, walk to the end of the earth and back over hot coals for us, right? We want to develop that level of loyalty, we don't get that from them because they are not a fit for us on a cultural uh, level. So before I kind of go on to the next step, I want to ask you guys, does anybody have questions? I'm going to unmute us for a second here. And I would like to, any feedback, questions, comments about authenticity and sort of how that plays into your leadership role within your business. Anybody have a question or a comment about that and what that looks like? Um, uh, this is Brooke, and I guess I don't necessarily have a question about authenticity and, and who I am as a woman and a business owner. Um, I'm getting more and more clear about that, um, but I do like what you're talking about as far as finding the right fit. Um, my question is, I had a younger gal apply and in her interview with me she was phenomenal um we talked about like furthering education and um you know doing like um uh you know positive motivational speaking type seminars or you know just just that growth mindset that you're talking about and she was in that interview like, yep, uh-huh, yep, you bet, uh-huh. And 
I know I didn't do a great job of asking more questions, but how do you differentiate that interview from who they might actually be and them telling you what they think you want to hear? Mm. So that's a really, really great question. And I think that um, uh, one of the things that can really be important in that interview process is to make sure that you have somebody else besides you interviewing, right? So I would, I would begin to develop, and these are systems, that are, right, that we put in place. And, you know, not all of the systems that we put in place are going to be rock, rock solid, right? But you need to have somebody that's in your corner um, that you feel like can also um, do a really good job of giving you an, a, a, a more they're not emotionally invested in your business, right? They can give you a more objectional viewpoint. So you want to make sure that you have the same set of questions that you're asking relatively the same set of questions. And those questions should be cultural. Um, in fact, uh, Trina, do you mind if I share a little bit about what we've been working on? Okay. Um, so Trina and I have been developing some questions around um, bringing adding another member to her team and um, so a big part of the questions that she's going to ask are going to be more skill driven because she needs to really understand what their skill level is going to be when she brings them on. However, um, the person who runs the administrative side of her business is going to be asking more cultural type questions, right? So now they have a more full picture on two different occasions. Don't set it up for the same day. Set it up on two separate days when you do your interviews. And the reason for that is because if I come in, I only have to prepare for one day. I only have to have one outfit. I only have to have one set of questions. I only have to have one. And, and what it does is it allows you some time to process in between that first initial meeting. Because I think sometimes when somebody tells us exactly what it is that we want to hear, we can get like, oh my gosh, this person could be great. This could be awesome. And you get really excited and fired up and you make a decision based on that emotion. Whereas sometimes when you, you take a minute and you step back from that, you have an opportunity to reflect on it and go, what could, what's the next level? What, how could I dig a little deeper in regard to this? And then somebody else who's very different than you, right? Who's a totally different personality type than you, um, has an opportunity to ask a different set of questions questions um, in a different way on a different day. So now this person has to come to the table um, with another layer, right? We are, as a society, I think, we're very, very uh, quick to hire and slow to fire, right? Like that is what we do. And we need to switch it the other way around. Slow to hire, quick to fire, right? And not quick to fire if they make a mistake, but there's a real reason that we have that 90 day system in place uh, or that 90 day um, probationary period, especially in the state of Montana, in place so that we can, we've, we've taken enough time before we bring them on and then um, to make sure that they're the right person. They went through multiple channels, we're getting good uh, feedback from, from many people. To, is this the right person? And then we are um, making some really, really good judgment calls inside of those 90 days, inside of that 90 day time frame. One of the things that I really, really love is that they are inside of that 90 days, I rehire them every 30 days, right? So they know that for the first 30 days, um, it's probation and we're going to sit down and we're going to do a 30 day evaluation. And then at the end of that 30 day evaluation, we're going to decide if I'm going to rehire you and if you're going to stay with me, right? Then it's the 60 day mark, we do the same thing again. And then at the, the 99 day or the 100 day mark or 90 day mark, um, we do the same thing again. So what this lets them know is I'm setting the bar very high for you. And as you are in the initial stages of your employment, I am setting up um, an evaluation, right? We go through, here are the things that I expect of you. Um, here is what is working. Here's what's not working. And you're not the only one that is evaluating them, right? The entire team, and depending on the size of your team, right? But the, the entire team should really be weighing in on what that looks like so that you have a very clear picture of, are they being a team player? It's real hard to fake it, right? For 90 days. So if, if you're going to see the stuff come up in that time frame, and you're going to push them in that 90 day time frame, you're going to, you're going to see most of the time for it to come up. So does that, um, let me unmute here. Does that help a little bit? Brooke? Amy, come look at Yeah, I, I think it really does um, make things a little bit 
more, well, not a little bit, a lot more clear, uh, especially in that initial hiring um, interview process. Um, so, yeah. Cool. I kind of just have been winging it, so that needs to change. <laughs> Hey, sometimes we gotta, you gotta fake it till you make it, right? Like, that's just, uh, that's part of it. And, and, and the winging it, like, we say winging it, but really, I think entrepreneurs don't give themselves enough credit often for the time and the, um, uh, like you, you're guided a lot by your intuition, right? Like you have, we have really great internal guidance systems and we often deny those, right? We let our head drive and sometimes that's not the best choice. So don't, don't beat yourself up too much about the winging it because that's what's gotten you. I mean, you've been, you've been over 10 years in business now, right? Yes. So you don't get 10 years in business by not having done some things right. So don't make sure that you don't beat yourself up too hard on that. Um, does anybody else have questions about that piece of the discussion or want to revisit any of the authenticity piece before we move on to the next step? No? Okay. Um, so the second step um, in this process is really about influence, right? And um, as entrepreneurs, most of us have a gift of being naturally influential, right? Influential with our clients, um, and we don't take that skill set often into our staff meetings. We don't take that skill set into our people. Um, and so what I would love for you guys to do is to really begin to think about where are you influencing people in your life, right? Are you influencing your significant others? Are you influencing your children? Are you influencing, are you a member of, of some kind of civic, civic organization or group? And are you influencing um, some people there? Um, because my guess is that you are being influential in your community, in your family, um, in some way, and you're not being as intentional in your business as you could be, right? So we look at what is the overall arching long-term goal that you have, and long-term is relative depending on the, the industry or the business. Some, for some businesses, it's a monthly thing, right? And then for some businesses, it's a quarterly, some business annual, some it's uh, even longer than that. We look at the goal and what is it that we need our people to do, right? What is it that we need for them to push and drive and develop in order to really get to that overarching goal? It is absolutely your job to be influential in helping them understand why they need to drive harder, why they need to push harder. And you've got to use your influence um, to do that. And so sometimes we don't, like I said, we don't realize where we already are where we are already being influence, influential and how we can take that same set of skills or principles that we're using to get results in other pieces or places of our life and impl implement them into our business. So when you, I mean, inspire someone, right? When you look at your, your team, sometimes it's like, it's always all about the business, the business, me, 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 the goal, the goal. I need you. I need you. I need you to do blah, 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 blah. And instead I like to take, and that's more of a blanket approach to leadership and so I like to remove the blanket approach to leadership and really get specific with each of my people sit down with them one-on-one -on -one and have a conversation about what is it that they want right what are their goals because when you understand what each member of your team and if you have a large team so I work with with some larger corporations um, and so if you have a team of let's say like this one company that I'm working with they have about 184 employees as the CEO or as the executive director, you can't possibly meet with all of those people to get that picture. But what you then teach your people how to do is you should have no more usually than five-ish people reporting to you to do a really effective and efficient job. Um, once you get more than that, it gets kind of diluted down. So then the person that is supervising those people should be meeting with those people and those people and those people. So it kind of goes on down the line. Um, but you should be sitting down with them and you should be meeting with them. And it doesn't have to take a long time. It doesn't have to be this huge, like you, you already are charged to do a lot of things. And as entrepreneurs, you're probably wearing many, many hats. Um, but that investment of time that you take, whether it's if you guys go to lunch, whether it's if you go grab coffee or whether it's if you set up a specific time in your office after a, a group staff meeting or something, you should have some one-on-one -on -one time with your people. They need that investment of your time. And when you can really understand if I'm Sue and I work for you and what's really important to me is 
time off. Uh, or if, if I'm Bob and I work for you, what's really important to me is making an extra $10,000 this year. Um, if I'm, you know, Sally and I work for you and what's really important to me is taking an Alaskan vacation. It's one of the things on my bucket list that I've always wanted to do. When you understand what drives them and motivates them, all of a sudden, you now can put some really, you, you can look at your overarching goals and what their piece is in making that go and how you can set up some creative um, carrots, so to speak, or solutions to help push and drive them to getting to that goal, right? So, um, and then some consequences. So, um, this kind of comes down to, um, th this is more specific to goal setting, but I am going to touch on it just a little bit because I think it's really important um, in how we set up motivating and inspiring them to get really good results within our company, right? So let's say um, that I know that um, my employee, the, the Alaskan vacation is the thing that she's always wanted. Now, is it my job as the owner to help her figure out like, that, like she might think that's a someday goal, right? Um, but what if I could make that a two-year goal for her? What if I could help her make that a five-year goal instead of a someday goal? All of a sudden now she has a vested interest in whatever it is that I'm trying to get her to do right and I and she sees that I really care genuinely about what it is that she wants to create for herself and her family so I might sit down with her and I might say like what is this trip gonna cost have you ever figured that out and she's like gosh no it's just so far out there I can't even begin to imagine um, what that looks like oh no ah! did I lose you guys no okay good no um, sorry <laughs> so uh, so what, what we do is we sit down and we really um, identify how we can get her over that cusp of bringing that into current re her current reality. And now we're supporting that. And now she's got another layer of investment into our business, right? So, um, and then we can set up some goals around that. We can set up, you can set it up as a bonus structure. You can set it up as a commission structure. You can set it up as, I mean, there's a million different ways to be able to set that up. So, um, I'm going to unmute us actually again. Um, and at questions about that at all. Anybody have questions about that? Peace. Oh, it's warm out here. <laughs> okay, no questions about that. You, you said consequences. You said you know goals, and but then you also said consequences. What would be an example of a consequence? Okay, so I'll uh, so I had a, a salesperson that was working for me, and um, one of her so she had a monthly goal, she had a quarterly goal, and she had an annual goal that she was really striving to hit. Right, and I always believe that as salespeople, they work within our company. Um, you know, they work they work on my team, and they're working they're contributing to the overall goal, but they also are building their own business inside of my business. Right. So I helped her see that first and foremost. So we talked about the goal and I got her really engaged in what that would look like for her. And then we set up, she also had, in addition to um, her uh, revenue goal that she needed to meet, um, she also had a weight loss goal. And we happened to be at that time um, on the eighth, ninth floor of the building. And so one of the things that we set up was every single week when we would sit down and do our one-on-one. -on -one. Now I met with, I had a team of seven salespeople that I met with every single week. You don't have to do that. That's a, that's pretty intense, but they had high goals. Um, every week I sat down with her and had a one-on-one. -on -one, and if she didn't hit her goal for the week, right, in terms of contacts, in terms of, I mean, there was lots of metrics that we used to measure what it was that she was doing. One of the things that she had to do for the whole next week was take the stairs every single day on the way up, right? So it became, a, yes, it was a consequence, but it really was fun. It was painful and it helped her also contribute to the other goals that she had um, personally, right? Um, and I'll tell you right now, after that week of coming every single day, and I did, I did them with her a couple of days, um, she never, I think she only ever missed her goal um, for as long as she worked with me, like two other times. I mean, she busted her hump to get there. Um, and so it was fun. And the other, the other thing that I set up with her is that I had, um, that I would pay her, 
um, gym membership for like three months if she hit this certain thing. I mean, there's a lot of ways that you can be really creative with the consequences, but we set it up ahead of time. Um, and sometimes it wasn't really about like writing them up or whatever, but it also helped me to see where she needed more training and development. I was very, very clear in those evaluations that I was having with her, like, here's the breakdown in, in what it is, why you're not reaching your goal. We need to really put a plan in place that allows you to, um, create more, um, consistency in your success. Right. So does that help a little bit, Carly? Yep. Oh, totally. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. Anybody else? Okay. Um, so, uh, the last thing, and I'm just going to take a, only a couple of minutes, uh, on this. The last thing is, um, how we set up the action, how we get them to do some things. I think we're often not transparent, um, as business owners to sharing what it is that we do on a daily basis. So they have no idea, right? They see that we're, maybe we're not there physically at the business, at the place of business, like at your brick and mortar shop every single day. So they're like, well, you're just out meeting people and having coffee all day or you're, I mean, they have no concept of what it looks like for us to be working. Like sometimes, like some of the entrepreneurs that I work with, I mean, they're some weeks are 70, 80 hours a week, right? And we're trying to get a real good handle on that. Um, so that you're not working those kinds of crazy hours, but your, your people that work for you sometimes have no clue because all they, they see is that they come in at, at eight o'clock and leave at five or whatever their schedule is and you're not there. So they're automatically like, oh, well, she's lazy or he's lazy and they're just never here and I'm doing all the work. So I think sometimes it really helps them to see what your specific goals are, right? I have a, a client that I work with that um, fundraising is a huge part of what she needs to do. And um, she's going out asking for $25,000, $50,000 asks from larger corporations to fund their um, little nonprofit. And prior to explaining that to people that have worked for her for like three or four years, they had no concept of what that looked like. And so they were like, she's just never here. She's never around. So once they understood that, they were like, oh my gosh. Oh, and by the way, they don't want to do that. They don't have the balls to go out and ask somebody for $25,000 or $50,000. So they understand the difference in what the activity level is and where you are and why you're, you're not there. So transparency in your goals, I think is really important. The other thing that it does is it also shows them that you're not willing to ask them to do anything that you're also not willing to do. Not specifically in terms of tasks, but just specifically in terms of overall contribution to the business, right? And that um, as the business owner, you're the one who has all the risk, right? You're the one who has all the liability at stake. So they need to also understand what that looks like. And sometimes we're very like, we don't tell people that, but I'm a really big fan of like, helping people understand what it is that you do every day and where the risk and the liability comes from as the business owner. And that helps keep them plugged in and engaged. So, um, so that's kind of the, the pieces that I had for you guys today. I think that's my recipe. So um, authenticity, uh, influence, and action attached to goals are really some good ways to invest in your team and hold them accountable to the goals without seeming like you're a big ass. So. Um, does anybody have any questions before I send you off out into the world to keep rocking your businesses and doing what you're doing? No? Okay. All right. Well, thank you guys all so much mm -hmm. for, for being on the call today. And, uh, it's the fourth Tuesday of every month. So we'll just keep doing this every single month. And, um, if you can make it great, if you can't, no problem. I always record the calls. So you should get the recording if you want to, um, archive it or it'll be on my website so that people can go back and check it out too. Um, and then feel free to invite anybody that you know that could benefit from this information. And if you want to work with me on a much deeper level, you guys know how to find me. So have an amazing Tuesday and um, keep rocking your, the leadership inside Woo. business. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a good day. Bye. 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 Woo. What was that? I mean, like talking.